Welcome everyone to the Got Books show. I'm your host, Timothy C. Ward. Today we have a dear friend of mine, Dave Lane, CEO and managing editor, publisher of Evolve Publishing. Welcome to the show, Dave. Thank you, Tim. I'm glad to be here. It's always a pleasure to see you, friend. Yeah, uh, you too. For our guests that may not be aware of Evolve Publishing, could you give us a brief vision of how you started the company? Sure. Uh, we started in August of 2011, uh, largely in response to the fact that neither I nor my uh, then partner, uh, or who would become my partner, uh, could get our books on with a literary agent. <clears throat> In my case, I got four consecutive positive rejections. You know, the, we love your book. It's so fantastic. Uh, but, and it really had nothing to do with the book. It had to do with the state of the marketplace. And they really weren't taking on too many new authors at that point. So we looked around in the self-publishing revolution, if that's what you want to call it, slash ebook revolution, was really getting underway at that time. This was late 2010 caused us to take a whole new look. I still didn't want to self-publish for a whole lot of reasons that I won't get into here. But um, I thought, gosh, there must be a publisher out there that has set themselves up to really take advantage of this new paradigm. There wasn't, at least that I could find to you know my satisfaction. And I had a 30-year background in business management. So I said to my partner, Dan, at the time, uh, you know what? Why don't we just do this? Uh, so we had a big checklist that we had put together. If we could find the perfect publisher for ourselves, what would we want? Knowing that we'd compromise on plenty, but if everything was perfect. Well, when we formed Evolve Publishing, we tried to adhere to that list um, to the greatest extent possible. And we came into being because... We found a niche that we thought needed to be filled, and uh, we were ready to take on that challenge. And there it was. So how does how do two people essentially execute on? It's a large endeavor, but it's a small publisher. So how how did you guys get the ground running, and uh, how's that vision evolved? Yeah, I had been Dan was actually an editing client of mine. I had been a freelance editor for. Um, about three years at that point. And I had worked with a few authors that I thought would be absolutely perfect for this. So the first thing I did was I reached out to them. A um, couple of them are still with us and, you know, doing, doing great. Uh, what? Who's that? Well, 13 years later, almost. Um, so we had six authors in the very beginning. Um, I had three other editors, or it might have been two in the very beginning, that I found also through some of the associations I had made online during those three years. Um, Dan's primary task mm -hmm. was to find uh, a couple of cover artists that could do some quality work for us. Uh, and we brought together this small team. We, uh, we did a sample launch of a couple of short stories uh, in September 2011, uh, we launched our first couple of books quietly <laughs> uh, in December of 2011 because we were still trying to figure out all the process, all the venues, make sure that we were doing everything right. So the first couple of uh, books that we did, one of which was mine, really functioned as our guinea pigs, if you will. There it is. And that's oh. the original version, by the way. Yeah. The original yeah. version. Wow. Um, a blast from the past. Yeah. Um, so we got that all sorted out. And then in March of 2012, we did our first really coordinated book launch where we launched six books at the same time and, you know, hit the social media waves and, and blitzed it everywhere that we could, engaged a couple of websites that, that helped us with that. And, um, uh, and we were off to the races. Um, of course, we also opened up a submissions process. And part of that uh, and growing our brand uh, included setting up a short story contest uh, where we ended up publishing what was originally called Evolution Volume 1. Um, and we just 
gradually started making those contacts. We started getting submissions. That was both exciting and frustrating. Um, but it, it gradually started to take off. And so it was, a, it was a lot of work those first couple of years, but we hung in there and we got there. For those that haven't read Evolve Publishing, how would you characterize your brand? Uh, pretty diverse in terms of the genres, the categories that we offer. We've gotten away from a couple. Uh, we don't do romance anymore. It's not our thing. There are people out there doing romance well, and uh, you know, it really just wasn't for us. Um, we're getting away from the kids' books, sadly. We had some great ones, really, really well done books. But gosh, despite all of our best efforts, we just couldn't sell them. We just couldn't. We tried. We tried a lot of different things with the author. Um, ultimately, for kids' books to really be successful, I think you have to be able to crack the school markets. And there's, a, you know, there are bureaucracies in place that are hard to crack. Uh, right. And we just, we just finally said this is not our our niche, and so we've pulled back on that. But we have great offerings in science fiction, fantasy, uh, mystery thriller, literary fiction, uh, women's fiction. Uh, horror, uh, and various offshoots or subcategories within those. And um, I think if, if people want to know how is Evolve Publishing different, probably they have to look just at our, our slogan. And we often, we often joke, you know, it's not just our slogan, it's practically our religion. Uh, we take it pretty seriously, and that is that quality is priority number one. Never thought Evolve Publishing would be a, a publisher that would re reject 95% plus of submissions. Sadly, that has been the case. Um, and we've had periods where it's gotten a little better than that. Uh, but overall, we've, we've been uh, pretty frustrated by the general quality of our submissions. A lot of time and energy goes into that. But we have been able to really weed out um, what we think of as kind of the cream of the crop. And so when we bring people on, we feel pretty comfortable that these are folks that are the right kind of people for us. They have the right kind of uh, book, very entertaining stories, fairly professional. We're going to help them clean it up with our editing and so forth. But um, quality is is I think the thing that has been the hallmark of our brand. And we've worked very hard at that. I think we've established it pretty well. Our reputation everywhere is pretty solid in that regard. Um, I don't think we're ever gonna compromise on that. I don't think we can. If we did, I, probably our business model would break down. So it's, um, it's a tough business and we tell people that we can't make almost any guarantees. Um, Really, the only guarantees are that we're going to work our butt off to make them as, them as successful as we can, um, and that we're never going to compromise on that quality commitment. And then we take it from there, and we do our best. Well, you have a great job, Dave. I've become a fan of Evolve Publishing through that process. Some of the early books, Forgive Me, Alex, yours, your thriller, Hot Sinatra, was another one, uh, Axel Howerton. Um, the stories are diverse. The brand is diverse, but yeah. it does yeah. unify within that sense as a reader that you can come into a story and it's very simple. It's like, uh, it's a, I don't know if you could call it a waiting room with plenty to do. It's like, it's not, uh, it's not crowded. The text is not crowded with, unnecessary details you just go right into the story it's character focused um, so that's one thing that I've seen from 2011 to the present I was just reading uh, 1030 by Michael Golvac was a mystery thriller and I thought this is great this is easy to get started on the characters are easy to understand I don't feel lost there's a mystery it's focused on the character and it went all the way to the end uh, small things like editing were not an issue. There were no typos. Not, not such a small thing, actually. <laughs> well, I mean, you would think, but 
I was shocked that the quality was so good for the editing. And it's just, I just picked up one of the books at random. Um, so congrats. Well, I'm a, thoughts I'm, on that. <laughs> I'm obviously pleased to hear that. And all of that is not by accident. It's by design. We decided early on that we were going to instill some very tough editorial guidelines. And I honestly, this is something I brought from my freelancing. Uh, what separated me as a freelance editor is that I, I really tore people's prose apart and helped them to um, elevate what I'll call the visual aspect of it, uh, which is to say that we want readers to experience the story, to see it in their mind's eye as if they were peripheral characters standing just outside the scene, watching it all unfold as it happens. And I think those are the three most important words in fiction, as it happens, mm -hmm. uh, or in the moment. If you keep the reader in the moment at all times, it ends up being a very quick and fun read. So we work very mm -hmm. hard at that. There are things that, uh, elements of writing that support that effort, and there are elements that work against it. So when we go into the editing process, we try to make sure that we're cleaning out all the stuff that's that's fighting us and insert where we need to the uh, the elements of prose that help to accomplish that that visual presentation. It's very important to us. And also, I will say this, you know, we get a lot of books from authors that start out, um, you know, like the old like the old uh, joke. It was a dark and stormy night. Ah. A uh, hint to any authors watching, don't start a story with setting. Work that in later when it's important. Start with action. Kick the reader in the face right from the first sentence, if you can, certainly from the first page. And um, we work pretty hard at that. Um, I, I revised the opening, for example, of my book something like 26 times. I mean, I just obsessed over it. Until I finally got, I, I wanted a first sentence that just kind of went, how? Um, and we try to do that with his, with all of our books. Um, you know, the writers are the, the creators. It's their story. It's not ours. And we don't try to make their voice our voice. We just try to help them elevate it in a way that's going to uh, better entertain readers and then ultimately make them more successful authors. So, editing is... I think what separates Evolve Publishing from so many others out there. And I'm going to include the big five in this because they've really cut back on their editorial staff since I would say since the fall of 2008, since that economic crash. I've seen reports that in some publishers, their editorial staff is down 75 to 80%. Whew. And, I, and I think it shows in the, in the books. You buy a book now from... Uh, the big five and you know you might find simple little typos on every other page and to me that's kind of unforgivable mistakes happen you know we have six or eight or ten or twelve that slip through because we just in everything else we just don't see it but when those get pointed out to us we go out and fix them so that um, perhaps six months into a publication of a book everything is perfect and people are going to be hard pressed to find any mistakes. We work pretty hard at that. Well, thank you. As a reader, I I come into a story not wanting to be distracted. I want to stay there, and having that clean text and the uh, what's happening now mindset is really important. It's really interesting. Yeah, you know when you those three important words as it happens or in the moment expressed a couple of different ways. That's when you get the readers who finish a book and they rub their eyes and they look at the yeah. clock and they say, holy cow, three o'clock in the morning. Jeez, I got to go to I got to get up and go to work in three hours. So that's what we shoot for. That's the kind of experience that we want our readers to have. Um, I'm not going to say we've succeeded 100 percent of the time, but I think we've gotten pretty close. Um, if our reviews and our awards are any indication, um, we've done a pretty good job of that. Speak to the awards. I don't, I know that back in the day, Hugo Awards was important. How does the award system work with Evolve Publishing and reaching readers? Well, there are 
probably a hundred different award sites out there now. And I think a lot of them are not worth even looking at. We've had some some issues. Some of them have some poor reputations. Um, I think some of those poor reputations are earned. I think in a couple of other cases, they're, they're unfair and maybe um, authors who haven't won, sorry to say it, maybe expressing some sour grapes as it were. Mm -hmm. um, but we've tried to be careful about submitting to only those places that we felt were, I'll put this in air quotes, uh, legitimate. So what makes them legitimate? Well, first of all, they have a fairly low award rate. I would say absolutely it needs to be below 10% or they're just not really doing their job. Um, so the award sites that we submit to regularly, um, there's probably six or seven that are kind of in our regular rotation. They all have award rates that range anywhere from a half a percent <laughs> I mean, a place like Reader's Favorite, wow, it's really hard to get a medal um, mm. at Reader's yeah. Favorite because they get so many submissions. So if you medal there, even if it's not a gold medal, if it's a silver medal, bronze medal, a finalist, um, that you've beaten out a lot of submissions to get that. So that's, that's something to hold your head up about. Um, but a lot of the other sites we submit to, they'll have an award rate of 3%, 4%, 5%. Uh, which we have found out from them. And that tells me that they're legitimate, that they're taking their job as an awards site seriously um, and not just being, you know, rubber stampers. Hey, send us your money. We'll give you an award. Uh, that's, that's meaningless. We don't want to participate in those. And what we have found, and we've talked to a couple of these sites, is that our award rate is five to... 10 to, in some cases, 15 times their average. Um, and a couple of sites have even told us that their their reviewers kind of fight over our titles. You know, they can handle so many titles as part of that season's awards process. And they say, well, I want this one from Evolve Publishing. Man, it's so great to hear that. that, uh, that uh, and I've had two sites tell me that. Uh, that tells me that we're, we're doing good. So. Well, congratulations. I <laughs> And by the way, I will mention this about, oh, oh thank you. I'm sorry. I, I wanted to say, we know that if somebody sees an award on a book, that that doesn't mean that, you know, the book's going to go sell a million copies and be a bestseller and do all of that. But, but I think that readers should be able to, when they're trying to, you know, skim through the ocean of books that's out there right now, and there are so millions of books out there, um, those awards might help them to say, "Hey, this this one won an award. It might be uh, it might be worth taking a look at." Then, of course, they have the look inside feature at a lot of the sites like Amazon and others, that, where they can do a quick preview of the opening. Um, and we hope that that's what's going to put them over the top and select our books um, above others that they might be looking at out there. So for that hoping the reader to, to get far enough that maybe they'll take a peek at our books. Uh, we think that those awards are very helpful in that regard for both the reader and of course the author. It has been a reward to me to see those awards and pick up a book and just get into it and be like, yep, that, that award, I'm, I'm reading an award-winning book. Um, so I think that's a, a great accomplishment for Evolve Publishing. All these, all these high quality books, I feel like I can pick up at random and enjoy whatever I take. What are some success stories since 2011? What, what are you glad well, for? Well, we've had, we've had a few. Um, in terms of um, standalone books, for example, that are not part of a series that um, were maybe a one-off with an author, those can be really, really difficult to find a market for. Um, but we had one in particular that was a great success, Kubrick's Game by uh, mm. Derek Taylor Kent. Um, he went the extra mile and actually uh, contracted. Uh, we worked with him to, we worked out all of the contract arrangements, but uh, he contracted uh, 
um, Jonathan Frakes from Star Trek The Next Generation mm -hmm. to be the primary narrative voice of the audio book, which is, uh, you know, that's kind of a big deal. He also had a couple of other Hollywood actors that, that had supporting roles in that audio book. So it was expensive for him, um, but I have to say it paid off and, uh, and that's, that's pretty exciting. We have some authors who have created some great series. Uh, typically, new authors will find a broader readership when they have three, four books or more out there. It's, it's, a, it's just part of the process. I think it's always been that way. Nowadays, it may take a little more than it did in the past. In the past, it might have taken three books. Now it might take four or five. But we've had authors that have experienced that. You know, they got their fourth book out, their fifth book out. And as we like to joke, you know, after after three years and four books, they became an overnight sensation. Um, but now they have a they have an audience and they get, um, you know, steady. They build their readership steadily, if modestly. Um, and every month, you know, they're earning royalties. They're not perhaps getting rich, but they're pursuing the dream. And, and maybe they'll get there at some point. Uh, these days, there aren't too many authors getting rich. And those that are, you know, they've got 20, 30 books, 40 books, 50 books out there. It's, uh, it's quite a process. Um, but we've been pleased to see the growth for some of those authors. We have a dozen or so that are, are in that place now where they, they seem to be right on the edge. And the marketplace hasn't been terribly cooperative the last three years. You know, we had the pandemic um, and now it's pretty hard economic times, inflation and so forth for, that are hurting a lot of folks. Um, so it, that part has been a bit of a challenge, but there's nothing we can do about that. All we can do is kind of ride out that storm and, and wait for the sun to shine on the other side of it. Uh, and in the meantime, um, those authors are continuing to grow their brand and, and they're doing pretty well. We we look at all those awards that we get, which we get at a very high rate, um, and the reviews. We look on a, on a you know a site like Amazon, for example, and we see that a book has uh, 200 reviews or ratings and has a 4.4 star average. We know that's not too common. It's very common to see 4.4 stars or 4.8 stars or five stars when somebody has six or eight or 10 reviews. Because, you know, they got they got mom and dad to review it. They got their next door neighbor to review it. They got their sister to review it and so forth. Amazon tries to catch those, but, you know. Um, but when you see a book with over 100 reviews, those those are real. Those are legitimate. And I would say even, you know, you get over 25 and you're not faking it anymore. <laughs> you know, you, you have to really earn those. And we have a number of books that have triple digit ratings and averaging well above four stars. Um, so all of that tells me that we've done our job well. The issue of trying to find new readers um, in what is already a very crowded and difficult or a crowded marketplace in a difficult economic environment well, that's a whole other challenge. Some of those things are outside of our control and we just have to do the best we can. Um, but if a reader is looking for great books, we are very confident that they can come to Evolve Publishing and they're gonna find something they really like. 2023, what success story comes to mind? Oh, I would say the biggest success story for 2023 is probably uh, our author, Scott Schinberg. He has an espionage thriller series out there called the Michelle Reagan series. Uh, real strong female um, intelligence agent, strong character, uh, great supporting cast, really fun and exciting stories, um, very realistic. Scott is a lifelong intelligence, I don't know, analyst, agent, something. I don't even know the whole details. He's yeah. worked for th three or four different, you know, three-letter agencies. Uh, he's a guy who knows the, the real world, as it were. Um, and although his books are fiction, 
you could very easily read one and say, yeah, this this could be the truth, actually, <laughs> even though it's not. So um, we ran a big promotion on his series uh, at the end, the last quarter of 23, and it exceeded our expectations wildly and mm -hmm. continues to do well. Um, so his series is suddenly, after five books and, and a few years, is on the map and uh and doing quite well i'm not surprised i started that last week i'm up to 30 percent and really oh, enjoying okay it. which one uh, the first one confessions of eden yeah uh, yeah looking yeah. at his bio and his three-letter agency experience i thought wow this guy is going to have some insider info and i think so i think so <laughs> he he includes that too it's cool because michelle reagan is like a trainee and he does a good job pacing it so that we're seeing her at the beginning of her career, her first mission. And then she's growing, she's getting more experience and she, and he includes these little snippets um, like make sure I check under the bed, you know, before she, go, <laughs> uh, before she sets up where she's going to kill someone in a hotel, you know, like little things like that, that maybe I wouldn't have thought of as not being a spy, um, but right. Scott's done a great job. So I'm excited to pick up that one. Um, I got that one on the sale, which must be what you're referring to. Do you have any other promotions coming up? You know, we have them running all the time, but 2024 is going to be a big year for us for promoting audiobooks. Uh, February through at least September, maybe October, every month we're going to have roughly 12 audiobooks that will be on sale for $5.99. And that's from a typical list price of anywhere from $12.95 to $16.95. So it's a significant savings. Um, those savings will be available at four different sites, which are Spotify, Chirp, uh, Apple, and Barnes & Noble. So if any audiobook listeners out there get their audiobooks from any of those four sites, uh, they're going to be able to enjoy some nice savings from us. And, and like I said, it's going to run for much of 2024. Ultimately, we're going to have the vast majority of our audiobooks that will be on sale one month during this calendar year. Um, so that'll be a nice opportunity for people who enjoy audiobooks, who are looking to perhaps discover a new author. Um, you know, we've got some out there with three, four, five books. They'll be able to give them a try at five ninety nine, not too big a risk for an audiobook, and see if they like that that author, that series, that story, those characters. And um, so we think that's a um, a nice way to say thanks to our to our valued customers, but also to give lots of new folks an opportunity to discover something that perhaps they haven't yet discovered that we think they're really going to like. So we're excited about that. And other promotions like for ebook promotions or or special print sales, those come up periodically throughout the year. Um, we are fairly tight on some of those because there are only so many opportunities out there that are actually effective for us um, and they're hard to get on at. So we keep working at it. We keep trying and we get, uh, you know, we get two or three or four nice ones every year. And uh, so when we do, we, we're we spreading the word. At Facebook, we're Evolved Pub. And uh, on Twitter, we are, I believe, also Evolved Pub. So um, any place, or I, I, I guess I'm supposed to call that X now. Uh, I'll, I'll get there eventually. So where people are following us on social media, they're always going to see those opportunities because we, of course, spread the word when it happens. Awesome. Well, I'm excited for the February sale. I, Mike Robinson has some horror books that I'm eager to pick up. Uh, just recently got finished book three of J.P. Barnett's Creature Feature series. Yeah, the Lore Stalker series. Very, very successful. It's been very well received. Yeah. I, six it, books. Yeah, six books. I, I'm excited for the adventure there. And then also you guys have a newsletter and is the yeah anybody can go to evolvedpub.com and probably they'll get a pop-up 
pretty quickly after they go there uh, where they'll have an opportunity to subscribe to our newsletter. Um, we don't spam people and, and hit people too hard with the stuff. Um, we try to, uh, to send the newsletter out when we have something of value to say. If we are, in fact, running a big promotion, we, we certainly want our subscribers to know about that. And so we'll alert them to it. Um, we don't want them to find out later that they missed an opportunity. So we're, we're pretty good about that. Um, if we have any sort of special events or, or new authors or books where we're doing something out of the ordinary, uh, we certainly announce those sort of things to our subscribers. Um, so we hope that when they get it, they realize that we're sending it simply because we have something to offer that they might want to see. And if they don't, okay, we're not going to send them another email three hours later or even three days later. Typically, we send out uh, one or, or two or possibly three a month if there's a whole lot going on. Usually, it's once or twice a month. And folks can get my short stories like my own God's Knife lineage for free if they're subscribers. Is that correct? Yeah, that's a nice added bonus. You know, we, we use short stories a lot of times as a way to introduce readers to a new author, a new story, a new set of characters. Uh, quite often, we make those free. We have several that are free for our newsletter subscribers. And they can sit down in a matter of three or four or five or maybe 10,000 words. You know, I mean, half the time, they could just read that on their lunch break, right? Um and they can determine if that sounds like something that's that's worth digging into further. It sounds like something they might like. And they will have spent no money on it and invested just a small amount of time. So uh, we think that's a nice benefit for our subscribers. And uh, we encourage them to take advantage of that. Thank you, Dave, for coming on today. I want to get you for another interview where we can talk more about specific books, maybe your thriller, Forgive Me, Alex, and, and a few other ones. And with more of your editor hat on, if you don't mind. Okay, all right, happy to do that. Well, thanks for joining us today and folks head over to Evolve Publishing on their website, social medias, check out their books and their sale here coming up soon for the audiobooks. And Yeah, if you're an audiobook fan, watch out for those. Those are gonna be great. And by the way, we're gonna be doing a, a blog post that we'll be sharing around on social media each month where we indicate all the books, that, the audio books that are on sale that month. So there'll be an easy place for you to find it. But if you want to just proactively starting February 1, which is when the first one goes out, go to evolvepub.com and click on the blog menu. You'll see it. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. I will post a link to that so folks can find that easily in our show notes. Good. Anything else you'd like to share with our guests, Dave? No, just, uh, you know, wait on in and uh, and take a look. You're going to be perhaps, if you've not heard of us before, you'll be surprised how good so many of our books are. Um, give them a crack. I mean, what's at the very least, you can you can open that look inside feature at Amazon or another site and you can start reading. And I think you'll see for yourself pretty quickly. Hey, this is pretty good. Um we have a lot of faith in, in the things that we're offering and we in, encourage you to check us out. And thank you, Tim, for this opportunity. Really great. Appreciate it. My pleasure, Dave. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. We'll see you next time. Thanks again.